what's good witches i am io fuega of bossybruja.com you can find me on instagram at bossy bruja you can find me also at bossy coven and bossy bruja coaching the purpose of this video first of all welcome to my youtube channel which is where i will be posting this video and thank you so much for tuning in like subscribe tell a friend and there's a way that you can turn on notifications so do that as well so the purpose of this video one i would like to go over petitions two i would like to give some pointers to those who are participating with me in September 2019's Prosperity Burn, um, which will be going on for about four weeks. Um, but I want to start out by uh, encouraging everyone who is either new to their craft or reclaiming their practice and their path. I was reading a book today um, called The Element, and this book was talking about creativity, how children never doubt their creativity. They have an immense comfort and courage and confidence when it comes to their creativity. If you ask, he says, if you ask a room of children, how many of you guys think you're creative everybody's gonna raise their hand but if you ask a group of adults how many of you feel like you're creative everyone is not going to raise their hand but because we are divine creators we are co-creators with life with the divine we are actually all creative now the argument that this author makes is that the education process has really done a lot of us a disservice because it has been so externally focused, which if you've been listening to me for the last week or so, I keep referencing the Metu Netter, which teaches that the ancients were very internally focused when it came to learning anything. They would go into trance and ask what they wanted to know of divine, universal God mind, right? Whereas in today's society, most of our studies and learning are very externally focused. We read the books, we go to the classes, we learn from people who are slightly ahead of us, people who are older, and I think that that method has a lot of merit. Um, but where is the internal learning going on? I would like to suggest that witches spend more time in prayer and meditation praying to whichever one of the deities you work with, whatever spirit you work with, if you want to connect with your ancestors, so that you can experience more internal learning, okay? More meditation, more trance work, more divination, more, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so as witches, I believe <laughs> that we owe it to ourselves, to our spirit, to our purpose, our divine reason for being on the planet, to be more self-guiding, self-governing um, when it comes to creating our craft, crafting our craft. You understand? I believe that it is so important to not only take what you are given, take what you are told, take what you are taught by others, take what you read in a book and try to do those things verbatim in an effort to get things right. I think it's so important to, instead of doing those things, to take as much as you can, take it in, take it all in, add your own flavor to it. Rearrange some things, remove some things, do some supplementation, and then create something of your own. There's a process I call input scramble output, which I think is you taking in information from a bunch of different paths and different people. I've been talking about the different people that I allow myself to be inspired by. Um, Jiu-Jitsu martial artists, 
strippers, models, um, cosmetologists, nail technicians, anybody. Wiccans, Appalachian witches, hoodoos, voodoos, <laughs> all types of priests. I allow myself, like UCLA basketball coaches, rappers, drug dealers. I allow myself to be informed by other people regardless of how different their paths are from mine because everyone has something to teach and if you are open aware and observant enough you can learn from anyone you can learn something whether it's what to do what not to do getting some type of an idea or an inspiration so when you take that information in something happens within you it goes through all of your filters all your personality your personal dna your personal story the things you've been through you make all types of associations you get inspired and motivated to do different things you make new connections and then output you create something new i was so blessed to begin my magical journey alongside my best friend who because she grew up vegan from birth vegan i think she had a piece of like meat one time she grew up vegan became a cook because she developed such a passion for food and creating you know creating new dishes and having food that was exciting for her to have so because of her work as a cook she was able to apply that same energy that same process that creativity and that experimentation that attitude of like trying something new having the courage and the insight and the creativity and the openness to try something new she brought that same energy into her craft so she didn't just take something she read from a book. She would always add something to it. I, I called it adding her own flavor. And because that's who I began my, my practice alongside, I learned that that was the method of creating a craft of your own. So you don't just take somebody else's craft and try and do it by the book and by the letter. You allow yourself to be creative and be in a space of, of, of creation. Now, according to Mastery by Robert Greene, right? He says that everybody goes through an apprentice phase. You have to be a good student. Being a good student means you are teachable. You listen, you know when to shut the F up. <laughs> you are receptive, you are very observant, and you, you master perfect practice, right? And then there comes a point where you begin to contribute to the work. You're not just, you're not just duplicating somebody else's style or somebody else's work. You get to a point where you begin to produce and create your own style. And that's what you have to do in magic. Input, read everything. That's what I do. I read everything. I don't care if other witches think that those people are bad for whatever reason. They don't like them. They the wrong skin tone. I don't care. I read everything so that I make informed decisions so that I am able to gain access to their resources because a lot of books you read them, you'll have a full bibliography or a book full of footnotes that reference other academic journals um other collectible books out of print rare hard to find books okay and other artists and authors you maybe never heard of other root workers you maybe never heard of so read everything look at other things do not steal anybody else's ideas but when you see something that's extraordinary something that you really like sit with it spend some time thinking about it what about that person that worker that that magic um the way that they're doing their magic makes you feel inspired what about it in particular do you like so that is just a word of encouragement to bring creativity and autonomy and ownership into your practice because it's your practice and that friend she always says your relationship with god is between you and god it is entirely and utterly personal so let's get into writing petitions, right? So you get a brown paper bag, right? Or you get some old paper. Let me show you an example. You get some old paper like this. 
It's like tea stained vintage paper. It's beautiful. And you rip out a circle. If you're drawing something into you, you tear that circle out clockwise or towards yourself. If you're sending something away, counterclockwise or away from yourself. And then you write your name, your full name and your birthday three times. I know some people who write it five times, some people who write it seven times, some people who sign write it nine times. It's up to you, but I always do three. Three is the number of divine maturity, high intelligence. It's the number of manifestation and creation. I'm good with three. So I write my full name and my birthday three times and then I turn it over and I write my petition. Usually I date it because there are some petitions that um, I continue to work with. I keep on an altar. I keep it in a, a book of scriptures. I keep it in my grimoire or my book of shadows. Um, grimoire is a collection of spells and recipes. A book of shadows is more like you know, going over the readings you've had, the divinations you've had, the predictions you've made, your personal journey as a witch. It's more of the diary of the witch and doesn't contain some spells usually as well. Um, so you go, you turn it over and you write your um, petition and you can keep it if you want to. When it manifests, set it on fire. There's no reason to keep it. I like to set it on fire. You might want to add it to some water and pour it into a house plant or you might want to, you might want to put the, sprinkle the ashes on a you know, a rose bush or something outside of your house um, on your property. If it was something good in the front yard, if it's not, it was something bad, you might want to take it to a crossroads or bury it in a tree. Now, you write the petition. I, you, you know, this is my suggestion. Um, and if it works for you, then great. But it is most important, and that's why I went into the things that I went into in the beginning of this video. It's more important that you find something that works for you. So try something and see if it works. Does it manifest? The way that I write is I usually start out with... Um, Dear God, dear spirit, if I'm working with a particular loi or I'm working with a particular ancestor, I would address it to them. I've worked with a saint before, I would address it to them. The date, dear such and such, just like I'm writing a letter. And then I always start with gratitude. I am so grateful for my life. Before I begin the process of asking for something new, I enjoy spending some time in gratitude because I am deeply grateful for what I already have. And I really am okay. So I come from a vibration of having already manifested such a wonderful life. So I'm asking for something new, something specific or something more. And that is okay. Because one of the things that I always preach about petitions is that you have to be honest. Don't say I want to win this um, Powerball for $800, Powerball, power, whatever, Powerball for $800 million so I can give it all the way to charity. This world sucks. People need money. No, be honest. You are not going to outwit God. You are not going to, um, you're not going to trick your spirits. Like they know what you're up to. They know your character. They know you. In some cases, they know you better than you know yourself. So be honest. I am so happy and thankful for my life. I am so happy and thankful now that. And I begin to write a petition and it can go on for however long it needs to go on for. Um, in some cases, particularly when it's for business or money, I cut right to the chase. It's very quick. It's very easy. It is me declaring the new thing as though it were, meaning I'm writing it as if it has already manifested. It is always present tense, always positive. I don't write a full note of all of the things that are fucked up in my life and here's everything that's wrong and I'm so tired of all of this. That is an awful, in my, in my experience, <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of judgy. In my experience, that is not a very good way to petition. Okay? After I'm done writing, I sign my name. And I um, sign it with my full name and my birthday. My signature. Sorry, my signature and my birthday. Um, after that, you might want to dust it with some powder. 
some attraction powder, powder, moon powder, um, an anointing powder, any type of powder that you have or that you make yourself um, that corresponds with what you are requesting in the petition. Okay. After that, or you can anoint it with oil. I know some people who anoint, um, anointed in all four corners. Um, one boy told me he anointed in all four corners and then in the middle to fix it. Um, I like the four corners. I like that. Um, one for each direction. And then, or if you're, if you, um, ripped it in a circle, one for north, one for south, one for west, one for east. I like the four because for me, it's like you've created a mini crossroads, right? So crossroads is where change happens, right? It invokes change. So I like the idea of four um, instead of five. Now, you take that petition and if you're drawing something to you, you fold it towards yourself. Very simple. Then you turn it clockwise and you fold it towards yourself and you keep folding until it gets teeny tiny weeny. And if you are sending something away, you fold it away. Counterclockwise, fold it away. Counterclockwise, it undoes, it reverses, it sends it away, right? And it, you know, it ends things, right? Right, or uh, sorry, left symbolizes the West, right? So this where the sun sets, we're, we're deading that thing, okay? Then you can take this petition and you can add it to a medicine bag. You can add it to a jar, any container magic. If, if, if it's in some type of a container, it's container magic, even if it's a seven day candle. Um, you can place it beneath the candle. You can place it beneath the skull. You guys know that I love these little geode skulls right? Put a petition right in there when I'm addressing La Santa Muerte. And this baby is so beautiful. Look at this. This little detail here. It's smooth. Okay. I like to place it either beneath the skull, right under. Okay. Bam. <laughs> or I like to scroll, roll it like a scroll. I would roll it towards me if I'm drawing something in or roll it away if I'm sending something away. Stick it right in there. And then I would keep this near wherever I'm doing my lamp or my candle, okay? But if I'm about to do some quick money work, let's say, all I do is I place that petition right underneath the candle I burn on top of it for however long I need to, and I set it on fire at the end, okay? Add the ashes to my plants. Easy, okay? Now, one of my favorite psalms, if you work with the Holy Bible, the Hebraic spell book, um, is Psalms 23. You'll hear a lot of workers say it. It's an all-purpose um, psalm. It opens roads, it brings blessings, it helps you establish and experience peace. Uh, but you have some really, really amazing books um, that you can find, like the Hoodoo Bible, that you can find um, correspondences for the Book of Psalms. I like Amplified Bibles because the Amplified Bibles has the in on the heading over every psalm what this psalm is about what it is for so if you get an amplified version of the bible that knocks out two birds with one stone okay um now spiritual baths for those of you participating in our month or so might be a little bit longer than that long prosperity burn you will receive four baths. The first is a reversal bath. Um, it's labels. So that's the one that you're going to do first. Then you are going to have a road opening bath, also labeled. After that, we are going to do a love drawing bath. 
and finally we're going to be doing a prosperity bath that bath is really pretty it's very floral it smells great the love bath smells really good too um, it smells amazing it's super bright and colorful so you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with that one I um, really wanted to bring a lot of joy a lot of excitement and high vibes and healing the relationship with the self within the love bath um, with the reversal you see some good luck stuff in there as well as some cleansing and some you know get rid of this type of shit or breaking jinx herbs and then for the road opening you see a lot of cut and clear um, in that one and then in the love it's all the sweet shit so when you receive your bath there are two ways that you can do this the way that i like to do it is to take a soap bath oh i clean my bathroom from head to toe from top to bottom sorry i wash my bathroom wash it wash it <laughs> from top to bottom and then i take a soap bath usually with the soap corresponding to whatever bath i'm about to take um which are available on my website if you would like to check that out um and then and you don't you don't have to do that Oops, sorry you don't have to do that you can simply you can simply bathe it's fine and then i'd like to have at least one candle some people like to have two well tea lights on either side of the the bath i like to have one seven day candle a white one um sometimes i'll add some oil like eden or like victory but i don't always add oils to this one this is simply an a, a candle to draw my spirit to add some ambiance it's for protection it's for the smooth manifestation of whatever it is it's very simple i don't make a big thing out of it okay it's very very simple okay um if you want to work with um the bible you might want to do like psalm 35 or psalm 91 for the reversal bath psalm 23 for the For the um, road opening, I would go look at some scriptures in Song of Solomon for the love bath or Proverbs 31, um, if you're a woman um, or if you self-identify um, as a woman. And I would maybe... I would do Psalm 100 or you can do Psalm 123 again for the prosperity bath. I love Psalm 100. It's make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. <laughs> Serve the Lord with gladness, right? I love that scripture. Um, so what you're going to do, this is the way that I like to do it. I like to clean the bathroom from top to bottom, take a shower, a soap bath. And then I like to fill up my tub. You guys, some of you may know I have like a, a little tub because I have a stand-up shower. Um, if you have a regular bathtub, you can simply fill it up with cool or cold water, not hot water. <laughs> and you can add the bath mix directly into the water. You want to put one of those little mesh things to catch the herbs so that you're not fucking up your plumbing and then yelling at me. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, I'm trying not to curse on YouTube. I just swore. Sorry. Um, put one of those little um, catchers or you can put the things into a tea bag. I've seen people do that. Put it into a little tea bag and toss that in the bathtub. Perfectly fine. The vibration of the herbs is wonderfully active. It's all good. I personally love to see all of the herbs and the flowers floating in my bath water. Um, now for the reversal. For the reversal, you can add more salt if you want to, but all of the herbs that are in there are pretty good for what we're doing. 
I would say that they're fine. If you want something to maybe amplify it, you can work with a crystal, like a clear quartz or something, add that to the water as well. But then you'll take this water and you're pouring it over your head seven times. Or you can do nine times, let's say nine times. You're pouring the water over your head nine times. It has the exact, it works the exact same way as if you submerge yourself fully into a big ass tub. I swear again, um, nine times. Do not think that because you don't have a bathtub at home, <laughs> your your spiritual work is not going to be done correctly. First of all, remember the talk we had earlier about this thinking things can be done correctly. Bullshit that people are on. I'm just a potty mouth. <laughs> okay, don't think in terms of doing it correctly. Be thorough, be present. Think about the fact that you are turning your luck from whatever it is right now to amazing, to outrageously amazing, okay? Outstanding and divine and beautiful, okay? This is a reversal bath, not a return to sender. I don't even know if you can do a return to sender bath, but this is a reversal, no targets. Like we're not sending anything to anyone. We are simply washing ourselves clean and, and we are taking, sorry, we are taking our luck from wherever it is to somewhere much better, okay? Now, with the road opening, um, if you want to add some lemongrass essential oil to that, that's fine. If you have victory oil, you can add that. Um, you can even add a little Florida water if you want to do that. Um, or some sliced lemons or some limes, um, some really good cut and clearing energy. Um, but if you don't want to add anything, it's perfectly fine the way it is. We'll do the exact same thing. Clean that bathroom from top to bottom, light two tea lights and put them on either side of the tub. If you don't have a tub, you only have a stand up shower. You can go ahead and have that seven day white candle and, you are going to pray the 23rd Psalm over that. For the reversal, it's 91. For the opening roads, it's the 23rd. And if you don't want to, you can just say your own words. Thank you, divine ancestors, enlightened ancestors, benevolent spirits that surround and guide me. Thank you, God, so much for my life. Thank you for leading me and guiding me always. Thank you for opening and clearing my road. Thank you for removing emotional debris. Thank you for enlightening my mind. Thank you for vivifying me and bringing me back to myself. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for restoring me and healing me completely. Thank you for filling my life with richness, gladness, happiness, beauty. Thank you for all of the amazing opportunities that now flow to me through these open roads. Thank you, God, because whatever door that you open, no man can close it. All of my opportunities come from you. All of my help comes from you. Just say a prayer, like a, a heartfelt, energetic, we can, everybody in heaven can tell you mean that shit kind of prayer. <sighs> Keep swearing. Okay, I'm gonna have to do like a, a jar. Like, you know those little jars people have if you swear too much? Anyways, oh, please don't hold me to that because I would be putting so much money in that thing, swear jar. So yeah, you can do a prayer like that. If you don't want to work with the scriptures, I understand um, feeling <laughs> like traumatized by the church and not wanting to, you know, use use those tools right now. I respect that. You don't have to. So you will pour that over you. And as you're pouring the water over yourself seven or nine times, um, I like nine definitely for the reversal, but for the opening roads, you can do, again, nine just keep it at nine. Nine is really good. Nine is rebirth. It's the highest number of change, right? Lisa Left Eye Lopez said it's like the highest number next to God. She was very into numerology. Pour 
the water over your head. And as you're praying, I mean, as you're pouring, you're praying, pour and pray, pour and pray, pour and visualize, pour and chant the scriptures if you want to. Um, some of you are going to say, how the hell am I supposed to pour and chant the scriptures? <laughs> if you want... This is stuff I used to do when I was like a teenager. I would print out the affirmations in the prayer and then I would hang them in my shower and say my affirmations every day. <laughs> Maybe I should sell that. I should sell some prayers and affirmations. That's a good idea. Okay, so I used to do that. You kidding me? Are you kidding me? Every day. Now, Love. <laughs> For the love bath. The love bath is where we get really fun. You've done your very simple. Oh, um, I'm going to tell you the second way that you can do these things after. So for the love bath, wash the bathroom top to bottom. I don't care if you just cleaned it yesterday, clean it again. And take a soap bath. If you are working with rose soap, that's really cool. Um, I'm into that. I would definitely use a rose soap to wash off, wash up before I start the spiritual bath because it kind it puts me in the mood, like it puts me in the energy. Um, so I would wash with the rose soap, and then I would, um, I would add my bath the salts and the flowers and herbs you're gonna get add it directly into the flower make sure you get that mesh in there to catch the herbs for you or you can put it into a little you know a little um cheesecloth or a tea bag a reusable tea bag and toss that bad boy in there you get in there and for this i would definitely suggest that you say some prayers that are heartfelt from your soul, from your mind, about the type of love you are creating in your life, that you are becoming in your life, that you are attracting, that you are creating, that you are magnetizing. The love drawing bath is not just romantic love. It's all love. It's respect, consideration, harmony. It's beautiful communication with people that you respect. It's you making friends with people that you really, really enjoy, people who support you and have your back, okay? It's being surrounded by those like-minded people and getting to, getting to the money together. It's, you know, love, love, all of the love, the perfect acceptance, the unconditional. True love is always unconditional. Okay, it's always perfect acceptance and allowing. Okay, so even it doesn't mean that you don't get checked sometimes, you don't get corrected because you definitely do. Okay, my my friends love me, but they will check me. They will check me. Okay, why y'all think I stopped going off on the internet? Because my friends was like, you need to chill. You need to calm down. Okay, so it doesn't mean that you don't get corrections. Right now prosperity now okay wait let me go back to the love bath love bath i would read some scriptures if i was going to read scriptures from um song of solomon i would wherever that scripture is i have found the one my soul loves i would definitely definitely put that in there um any scripture that is about um the love of a friend i would put that in there I might, I might mosey over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Everybody knows that. I might talk about the, the fruit of the Spirit in Ephesians and read that. Nope. I'm almost certain that's Galatians, not Ephesians. It's been, it's been a while, which is roll with me, okay? Um, anyway, so I would speak those words. And when I'm saying say these prayers, I'm talking about speaking them over the water before you get into the water. But after you speak those prayers over the water, you get in the water and you pour it over yourself. 
pour it over yourself and you continue with your chanting. You continue with the recitation of your prayers. You continue with the chanting of the scriptures. You, you just continue visualizing and imagining yourself glowing, maybe with a pink aura and attracting all of the sweetness and the love and the divine relationships and connections into your life, attracting your soul family. It's beautiful. Even as I sit here and think about it, it's beautiful. Now we're going to do our prosperity. All of these baths, you can have music that corresponds. Um, maybe some gospel, God gonna work it out type of stuff <laughs> for the open roads and for the, the reversal baths. But for the love bath, any love music, you can have a pink seven-day candle or stay with the white um, seven-day candle if you would like. Um, of course, I'm gonna be over here on my end uh, burning candles for reversals, burning candles for open roads, burning candles for love drawing for everyone, and burning candles for prosperity we're going to do my favorite double strength mr money candles as usual <laughs> okay i love those candles um i'm gonna have to be up soon because you're getting kind of short now for the prosperity bath you can have your prosperity um playlist going on i have one on my youtube channel if you want to borrow that one help yourself you can have orange gold yellow green even brown I even use brown. I've used brown to manifest homes before. Um, I've even heard of people using blue candles um, to manifest money. I've even heard of people using purple to manifest opportunities to make money um, and just being an all around boss bitch. Okay. So you can do that as well. Um, you can do the two tea lights if you have a bathtub, or you can simply put that one seven day candle up there. And you wash your bathroom from top to bottom, you light your candle, you put on your music, you take a regular soap bath, and then you run some cold water and you add your herbs and you speak the Psalm 100 over that bath. And then you begin to pour it over your head, continuing to pray, continuing to visualize, continuing to chant scriptures. And after you take all of these baths, right, you're going to do one a week where I'm thinking we're going to do them every single um, Saturday, which is not the traditional day that most people would probably think of. But I said what I said, Saturday is a reason, okay? bringing some order we're bringing some some cleanliness okay we're wrapping up loose ends we're getting things in order okay we are we are working with the power of saturn all right now big daddy gonna come in and get us right <laughs> y'all go y'all gonna be y'all y'all gonna get in when you fit in all right <laughs> so we are going to be doing these baths four weeks in a row after you take this bath, you want to sleep on white sheets. You want to sleep in some freshly washed clothing, something clean. You can wear white if you would like. You absolutely do not towel dry. <laughs> no, <laughs> you do not wash your blessings off and you have to stay um, with that bath for at least a full 24 hours. Now, there are some people who say stay with it for um, three days. I've had a bath with my mumbo that I was not able to bathe for six days. So be happy that I'm telling your ass only 24 hours. Allow your blessings to seep into your aura, into your cells, and transform you, okay? This is why I, I've been thinking, I have theories about why so many of my teachers say use cold water. We shocking your ass into a new life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, for your love bath, you can add more roses if you would like. You can add roses to your prosperity bath as well, if you would like. Um, with this one, I would be very intentional about what you are manifesting. So a lot of times people will do this thing where it's like, I'm going to manifest $50,000 so that I can, I can put a down payment on this new property. Or I'm going to manifest $67,000 so I can manif so I can buy this Tesla. That's, that's no. Manifest what you're manifesting. What I mean by that is if you're manifesting a Tesla, 
manifest the Tesla. Don't think about the stepping stones to get to. You don't need to manifest stepping stones to manifest the ultimate thing you desire. Think about the thing that you desire and let the universal mind that is a lot smarter than all of us combined handle the process or the how of attaining that thing. See yourself driving your car. When you get into your car and you close the door and you turn on the engine, but it is so silent, did you even turn the shit on? <laughs> you know, get excited. Get excited. Your car talks to you. You have the big TV screen there. You can play all of your favorite Beyonce songs. You feel me? Just get into it. Get into the manifestation of the thing you actually desire. I I know a boy, I think he was like 22 when I met him, who manifested a Tesla. He manifested a Tesla. He paid $8,000 for it because he was working on a lot and whoever the owner of the place was decided to, to give it to him for a very, very affordable price. So stop it. I know people who have manifested cars as gifts. Gifts. Stop. <laughs> With the stepping stone bullshit. Because it's really getting on my nerves. Okay? Now, the last thing is some people like to boil the herbs. Right? They will run a bath, but they boil the herbs for like seven or nine minutes on on the stove. And then they add it to their water and they let it cool down. You can do that if you want. Usually, my understanding is that that's going to be with fresh herbs, not dried ones. Okay? Um, but if you want to do that with your with your bath concoction, feel free. Just make sure you keep an eye on it. You don't really need to do it longer than nine minutes. Add it to your water, let it cool down, okay? That's your alternative. I personally like to get my bath over with. Like, I don't like pouring cold water over my over my twist. <laughs> like, I don't like pouring cold water on myself, um, but I will, obviously. But I like to just get in there, get it done, and get out. And I always feel amazing. Also, if you are going to be adding oils, you can. There's some spiritual baths that do not call for oils at all. With this one, you can do some oils if you would like to. There are some spiritual baths don't, that don't call for water. You have to use other things. Be happy that these are water baths, okay? Um, <laughs> so I wouldn't add more than like a tablespoon of oil to any of these baths, um, especially if you're working with like Fortress. If you're working with Fortress, I would mix that in there really, really well um, and not let it, not, you know, not get too much of that on your face or, you know, can it can be a little irritating because of what's in it. Um, victory for the reversal um, also would work, would probably work better. I would do, Eden for open roads. I would do Love Spell or Ultra Femme for the, the love drawing baths. I would not work with hypnotism on this bath, guys. Um, and then I would do a Luxor with the uh, Prosperity bath. I will be on this end messaging you all, keeping you all abreast of what we're doing. I will also be adding everyone to a private group so that you can see some private stories, so that you can ask me your questions. Um, so please connect yourself to my page and remain connected for the duration of this whole thing. I hope that that's been helpful. I have enjoyed talking to myself for an hour and I hope that you find benefit in this video if you are part of the prosperity burn and you have questions ask them in our private instagram group think before you ask questions though because that's one of my pet peeves i love you bye